Welcome to Education Today. I'm Nate Bailey of Armstrong High School in the Armstrong School District. Over the years, we have brought in community leaders to talk about the dangers of drug and alcohol abuse. Educate us about bullying and domestic abuse, talk about programs, and the Drugs Kill Dreams program. All of these programs are designed to educate our community about the topics. Understand how to combat them and identify places you can turn when and if they need arises. Tonight we are bringing community leaders back in to talk about a variety of topics related to these areas. Welcome to Education Today. Would you please introduce yourselves and your roles in our community? I'm Gary DiComo, Magisterial District Judge in Fort City. And I'm Cindy McRae, I'm the Director of ARC Manor. I'm Jamie Owen, I'm a Magisterial District Judge in Catani. Can you each tell us some real world consequences of drugs or alcohol? Um, in my job, or our jobs, we see it every day. Uh, addictions destroying not only the user of the drugs, but the entire family unit, whether it's alcohol, tobacco, or other drugs in the community. Uh, probably uh, 60 to 70 percent of the criminal cases that flow through our office are DUIs, drug cases, or criminal cases, criminal acts committed while the person was under the influence of or addicted to alcohol or other drugs. And I would agree, Arc Manor serves uh, about 200 individuals on any given day for treatment and we see uh, people's lives just torn apart by the disease of addiction and family members affected. And I would uh, second what Judge Tacoma has said. I would only add to that, uh, and it may be a, a popular misconception, it shouldn't be, but uh, intoxication, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, uh, addiction is not a defense, it's not an excuse. Um, and so you can, you can go out and you can voluntarily drink and get high uh, or whatever you want to do, but it is no defense to criminal conduct. Today's society seems to be more and more accepting of the use of marijuana. What is our state's current status regarding that drug? I just heard on the news today, and I'm not an expert on this, that the medical marijuana dispensary opened today in Butler County. I think maybe Cindy or Jamie knows more about that than I do. Uh, today is the very first day for the medical marijuana dispensary in Butler County and medical marijuana has been legalized so there were uh, about 17,000 applicants that had gone through doctors to apply and I believe there's about 4,000 individuals in the state of Pennsylvania that are approved for medical marijuana. Uh, medical marijuana is different from marijuana that has a THC component that would get an individual high but there are obvious concerns about individuals um, being appropriately prescribed marijuana because marijuana has been and is a gateway drug for other substances and that's been proven by research. Um, I have a son who's uh, married and lives in the state of Colorado. And the state of Colorado has had uh, medical marijuana for quite a while. Um, they now have recreational marijuana as, as well out there. And uh, my son used to tell me that uh, medical marijuana was better than the regular stuff. Um, the thing about marijuana, whether it's medical marijuana or whether it's recreational marijuana, it is still illegal under federal law. It is still a controlled substance under federal law. Um, what you see happening, and I don't know how it's going to be dealt with here in Pennsylvania, but at least out there, um, it was a huge uh, money item for the state out there. Um, but it's all a cash deal because it's against the law federally, so they can't deposit their money into uh, banks that are federally insured. It's, it's kind of a crazy thing. The bottom line, though, is that first off, you have to have a prescription for medical marijuana. I mean, nobody can walk into a dispensary and just say, hey, I want some marijuana. You have to have a prescription for it going in. The fact of the matter is that, at least so far, I haven't seen anything that's going to decriminalize 
marijuana, whether it's, whether it's recreational marijuana or whether it's medical marijuana. And by that, what I mean is, if you've got medical marijuana with you and you don't have a prescription, you can still be charged for possession of marijuana. And, and the same holds true for any other um, controlled substance offenses that might relate to marijuana. If you don't have a prescription for it, you're not supposed to have it, and it's still against the law. How does it make what you do more difficult, and what are the consequences of using marijuana? Well, like Cindy said, marijuana is a, a gateway drug. It's still a gateway drug. And what I see happening all through 24 years of being a magistrate and a prevention advocate, this addiction process goes right up the ladder. Tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana. In fact, I, I brought something along here today, uh, and I want to read it to you real quick. In a study by the Journal of Pediatrics, it was noted that individuals who never used marijuana were likely never to use heroin. Well, they have the statistics, not me, okay? So I believe marijuana is a problem. I believe marijuana is gonna be more of a problem uh, because we have problems keeping tobacco and alcohol away from our youth. Now, if they start using medical marijuana, how are we gonna keep the medical marijuana away from our youth. I think it's going to be a larger problem and I think it's going to be a larger problem on the highways. From the treatment perspective, I'm not sure that it complicates things any more than having a prescription for an opiate complicates things. Individuals that are prescribed opiates or anti-anxiety medications can abuse those medications. And what we see is those tend to lead to higher level abuse of other substances. So in the scope of what we do for drug and alcohol treatment, what we are looking for is somebody using it outside the scope of their prescription. So as Magistrate Owen said, if an individual has possession of marijuana, but doesn't have a prescription for the medical marijuana, that is still an issue that somebody using something that is not meant to be used. Uh, just a couple follow-up comments. I mean, <clears throat> understand, and I, I'll just give an example, and I'll give the example of driving under the influence. Um, there are some states that have been down this road already, and they have a per se um, statute what I mean when I say a per se statute, if you look at the DUI law and the typical DUI law with regard to alcohol, there are standards in there about levels that are deemed to be driving under the influence. You need to know, however, there's a, there is a general impairment section. And the general impairment section deals not only with alcohol, but also drugs. And it basically says if you're under the influence to such a degree that you are incapable a safe operation of a vehicle, that's a general statement. That's a general statement that has nothing to do with the amount of marijuana, has nothing to do with medical marijuana. Um, it, it, it's nothing. Now, there are a couple of additional uh, statutory provisions there that are per se when it comes to marijuana. But again, there's still the general impairment section that's there. What the problem is too is, and what I've seen in the high schools when we go out to the high schools, a lot of kids believe that they can get high and they can still drive the car and they can't be picked up for driving under the influence, which as Jamie stated, that's a false perception. That's a, it's false, okay? And, and we've been having some problems with young people 16 to 18 years old smoking marijuana and driving a car. And we've seen those issues and I know of high school students that still believe they can do that. And, that's not the case. We all know, or should know, the inherent dangers and consequences of drinking and driving. But I think that people don't understand the connection of using, of using drugs and driving. Can you speak about that? Well, I think Jamie addressed that somewhat uh, already. Uh, like I said, we see it every day. Probably half my caseload, and I have about 450 criminal cases every year, probably half my caseload are DUIs, driving under the influence of alcohol or other drugs. So it's a problem. And 
When you're saying driving under the influence of alcohol or other drugs, what we have seen in Western Pennsylvania is that the majority of DUI cases now are related to the other drugs and not necessarily the alcohol. So most people, when they think of driving under the influence, think of alcohol and driving, but what we are seeing are individuals that are under the influence of other substances. I just have one other brief comment, and, and we keep talking about DUI. A lot of people don't understand that there is an offense called BUI. And BUI is boating under the influence. So anybody who's been out on a river probably sees people in a boat across the way or people on the shore drinking beer or what have you. There is a BUI statute and you can be arrested for boating under the influence. Um, pretty interesting to talk to a waterway enforcement officer and have him talk about the standard sobriety testing or field sobriety testing that goes on for a BUI offender as opposed to a DUI offender. For instance, how do you get somebody to raise one leg whenever they're standing in a boat on the water that's wobbling? There, there's a whole set of standard field sobriety tests that apply to BUI as well. And now we're going to take a short break. We'll be back in a minute to talk more about drugs, alcohol, and treatments. Stay tuned. Success. We see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path. An alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Hello, I'm Cindy McRae, Director of ARC Manor Addiction Recovery Center. ARC Manor is committed to confidential quality services 24 hours a day, including fully licensed residential, partial hospital, and outpatient treatment programs. With 39 years of experience in addiction treatment, ARC Manor puts an emphasis on the needs of special populations including women, co-occurring disorders, and adolescents. For more information, call 724-548-7607 or 800-323-1333. Brought to you by the Armstrong Indiana Drug-Free Communities Coalition. All your professors, all of them. They know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and it can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. And we're back with education today. Tonight we are talking about the use of drugs and alcohol as well as different programs of treatment that are available. And we are joined by District Judges Jay De Gary DeComo and Jamie Owen as well as Cindy McRae of Arc Manor. Mr. DeComo, I know that you still organize your own program that you bring to co county schools. Can you tell us a little bit about the program? Uh, yeah, I started uh, talking to kids about drug prevention uh, actually 24 years ago in uh, then I adopted the slogan, Drugs Kill Dreams, from a Manor Township fourth grade poster contest 17 years ago. So we've called it the Drugs Kill Dreams program uh, since then. Uh, in fifth and sixth and seventh grade, I have a program where, with the help of this studio, uh, I get pre-recorded prevention messages from uh, athletes, doctors, people in recovery. Uh, people incarcerated and cancer patients and uh, I present a program to the schools a live presentation by me with pre-recorded prevention messages from athletes uh, doctors uh, and a variety of different people in the uh, in the area uh, what I found over the years uh, kids get bored with me talking to them for any length of time so if I have uh, 17 different people on pre-recorded messages. They don't get as bored and they tend to listen to uh, Ben Rosselsberger or uh, Antonio Brown uh, or Sidney Crosby 
more than they would listen to me. But it's all the same prevention message. Are there any specific activities planned for the primary or secondary schools that are designed to educate our students about these topics? Well, I've, I've presented the program, the Drug School Dreams program, to all the schools in the county except uh, West Shemokin and Kevin McCausland, the new magistrate out there. We're going to be doing those programs in March. Uh, plus, we have uh, uh, banners, the Drug Skill Dreams banners that are going to be uh, displayed at all the schools in the Shannock area, Dayton, Shannock Elementary, Elderton. Uh, plus, we're going to be doing a senior high program out there where we bring in the Pennsylvania State Police and kids from uh, George Junior Republic. Uh, the, senior, the senior high students are more uh, interested in hearing from kids their own age. So we have those programs planned. What are some of the most um, prevalent drug issues that we are seeing in our community? Uh, well, I will say what we see, uh, because I've been at Arc Manor now for a very long time, about 18 years, and uh, initially when we saw people for treatment, it was more related to alcohol use and long-term alcohol use. And what we see in the community now are not only the heroin and the opioids that people are talking about, but polysubstance drug use. People are not just using one substance. They're using um, prescription drugs, opiates, heroin, cocaine, marijuana, um, benzodiazepines. Not one substance of abuse is the most prevalent right now. So what is the age range for in individuals who are seeking treatment? Sadly, the youngest person that we had in our office for treatment last year was age 11, and it ranges all the way to 74 years of age, all for very different reasons, very different levels of abuse or dependence, but the, that's the age range as of last year. What type of treatment programs are offered in our community? Arc Manor has been offering a pretty wide range of treatment, and that's been necessary for the community. Uh, most people don't know that the entire second level of Arc Manor's building in Catanning is a residential program, so it's an inpatient unit for individuals that need that level of care. And then we have a very wide range of outpatient services. Uh, we have a program called partial hospitalization where individuals come five days a week. We have intensive outpatient services for people that need more care. Um, evenings, um, daytime, you name it, we offer just about any service at any hour. And then we have outpatient. And most people think of outpatient treatment as maybe coming to a therapy session once a week. But what our outpatient looks like is uh, pretty much wrapping services around a person so that they can come three or four days a week and still be considered an outpatient care. My concern always whenever I hear about programs, and I don't care whether they're programs here in, in uh, Armstrong County or with their facilities outside of the county, my, my concern always is, and I've seen this time and time again, um, the first time we get somebody in jail, and, and, and it may not be their first go round, but um, <clears throat> all of a sudden they want to get into rehab. And my statement to these individuals always is, look, I, I mean, that, that's commendable. I appreciate the fact that you want to go to rehab. But two things about it. Number one, if you don't commit yourself to the program, it's not going to work. And, and, and we see it time and time and time again with recidivists who, who come back in here, well, it didn't work the last time. I'm going to try it again. I really want to try it again. And, and again, my comment to them always is, you really have to commit yourself to that program. Because if you don't, I'm going to see you again. And it's better that I see you again in here before it's too late. How can individuals access treatment and ask for help? By calling, uh, Arc Manor has an 800 number that answers 24-7, so at whatever point that they are ready, and exactly what Magistrate Owen said, people have to be ready to come to treatment. It's not just wanting to make a change in order to avoid a consequence. There's a commitment to making changes, and it's a long term. So at the point that somebody is ready, they can call, they can walk in. 
uh, we are available to get people the help that they need all the time. We've actually seen a pretty big rise in people contacting us through our website and just reaching out that way and our admissions office will connect with them that way too. Are there services available for family members who might need help or have questions about what to do? Not enough. Uh, we really need family members to be involved in a person's treatment and even if a person is not in treatment the family members usually need support and help because it's very difficult to watch a loved one go through the process of addiction. Uh, but what is available, we offer for our inpatient clients, we offer family night for them once a week. We partner with the Richard G. Snyder YMCA and offer a family support group free of charge on Mondays at the YMCA. And uh, we would love to see more family members there. You don't have to have an individual in treatment to be a family member that needs support. What ordinary citizens can do to combat the evils of drugs and domestic violence? What advice does each of you have? I think the uh, individuals can report suspicious activity to the 800 number for the uh, drug for, uh, arm net. They have an 800 number. I think people can report any suspicious activities. I think we all as a society have to promote a healthy, uh, drug-free lifestyle. That's what we have to do. I would agree as far as an ordinary citizen. People know when their family members, their friends, their loved ones are struggling well before the criminal justice system does, before the treatment providers. So knowing how to ask for help, knowing that if you see something that's not normal behavior, that there are behavior changes, that you're seeking the help that they might need, asking questions, and definitely if you see something that's abnormal, reporting it to um, one of the hotlines that are available to get the criminal justice system involved. The touchstone has always been, Zach, if you see something, say something. Uh, and, it, and it's out there, and it's always been out there. Um, I know that, that individuals who do say something sometimes get frustrated because they think law enforcement uh, from wherever is not acting as quickly or as rapidly as they would like to see them act. Um, it's not the easiest thing to catch a drug dealer, I'm going to tell you that right now, but anything that you can tell law enforcement that you think is suspicious activity will go a long way. There are um, some neighborhood watch groups out there. Uh, there's one up in uh, Parker now, in fact, uh, Parker's is in the northernmost corner of Armstrong County, as some of you folks may not know where it is even. Uh, but that's in my district, and they've got a, uh, what started out to be a very active group. Um, again, sort of a neighborhood watch, but they keep bringing in more and more individuals to try and educate the community on what to look for. Um, they, they've had people, the one night that I was up there, because Judge DeComo passed it off to me, uh, <laughs> They had people in there from, from um, EMTs that were explaining the experiences that they have to deal with. Um, and, and believe me, they, they have some pretty nasty experiences that they can tell you about. So if you see something, say something. What are some resources our viewers could consult to learn more? Well, I will mention, as I did before, Arc Manor has a 24-7 hotline, so if there are ever any questions regarding getting somebody help or just needing information about addiction, that hotline answers 24-7, so it's 800-323-1333. We also have a website, which is www.arcmanor.org, and you can ask questions. There are a variety of resources. Um, links to information, all of the stuff that we've been talking about with medical marijuana and some of the challenges that we face, there's information available and links there too. I'll be the first to admit that I'm very technologically challenged, but I do know how to Google things. And uh, if you have available to you a computer, and I'm sure most every home does at this point in time, Google it. Google the question. You'll, you'll find resources out there that will, you know, astound you that they're out there. Um, some of them are legit, some of them are not legit, 
but certainly you can find a lot of um, a lot of resources out there by doing that. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about for our viewers at home? Uh, I'd like to mention the Drugs Kill Dreams Jail Experience. It's been a program we have at the Armstrong County Jail uh, every other month. It's a prevention program, uh, all volunteer prevention program. Uh, Cindy's there all the time. Uh, Coroner Myers is there all the time. Uh, Jamie's been out there. It's a good program. Uh, we've had it for 10 years and probably uh, at least a few thousand people have gone through the program and most of them have uh, appreciated it and learned from it. So I'd like to encourage anybody to uh, come out. They can contact Dark Manor and uh, it's free of charge. Contact Dark Manor and we could get you through the program and both youth and adults learn something from the program. And I would just like to say thank you for this opportunity because the more that we can do to talk about the subject and do prevention toward addiction and substance abuse, the less likely people are going to need the criminal justice system and the treatment services. We need to do more with prevention. I secondary motion. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks to our guests for being on the show. District Judges Jade Gary DeComo and Jamie Owen, as well as ARC Manor Sydney McRae. Our thanks also go out to the TV production crew of Armstrong High School, led by their teacher, Mr. Don Swanson. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. For more information about the district, visit us on our website and have a great week.